Okay. All right. I'll go ahead and kick it off. So hi, everyone. Happy Monday. Hope you all had a great weekend. Um, I'm Demay Bigbuna. I'm the co-founder of Chesi, and we are an all-in-one solution for ERG leaders and DEI practitioners uh, to more efficiently manage and measure their employee resource groups. Uh, this webinar is not about us, though, so I will save you know our spill for later. Um, I'm super excited about our webinar today, though. So in honor of Women's History Month, we are presenting game-changing career moves, navigating into leadership roles as a woman of color, uh, presented by Audrey Gallo, who is the DEI Program Director at General Assembly, um, and the founder of AG Voiced, a coaching practice helping women of color accelerate their careers. Um, a few notes before I pass it over to Audrey and get started. Uh, we will be doing a Q&A at the end of her presentation. So as we're going through it, feel free to drop your questions in the chat and we'll make sure to go through those one by one at the end of the call. Uh, but then also Audrey has graciously shared her um, Game Changer Career Moves Guide with our audience. Um, so you can actually download that guide in the resources button at the bottom of your screen. Um, so feel free to flip through that as we're going through the presentation. And then again, we'll answer any outstanding questions at the end of the meeting. All right. Um, so without further ado, I will pass it over to Audrey. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Mebby, and thank you, Chesie, for this collaboration. I'm super excited to be here um, and energized to hear your questions and sort of what is going on. So I'm going to jump right in and share my screen. Um, this today, what we're going to be talking about, let's make sure that's full screen there for you. Excellent. All right. Um, so what we're going to be talking about is game changing career moves. I like to call them game changing because it's really when you're at a point in your career where, you know, things are going well, you're learning a lot, but you're ready for that big shift, right? You want things to really move in a kind of new, exciting direction, whether that is promotion into leadership, starting to put the pieces towards leadership, um, you know, kind of really a, a new chapter, if you will, in your career phase. In my practice, um, I work with women of color who are looking to move into management or leadership positions specifically. Um, a lot of uh, those clients are in the tech space, um, but I also have a background in uh, the nonprofit uh, sector. So some of my clients also are in that, in that space as well. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about today's content. Um, so we're going to do a little intro and some context setting, um, and then I'm going to walk you through the five game-changing moves. It's in that guide that Tamembe uh, references in the resources that you can download. So you're getting a little, you know, kind of little coaching here one-on-one -on -one, um, through those game-changing moves, and then we'll have plenty of time for Q&A. Uh, but I do have the chat I'm looking at that while we're going through this. So if there's anything that pops up or you want to ask about, share your own experience if you feel comfortable um, with this group, please do so. Um, and so let's get started. All right, so why do I do this work? Why, why do I spend time talking about this? I think is an important question before we jump in. Um, the reason is because this also comes from my own personal experience, um, you know, trying to get to a leadership role, trying to be part of the decision-making. And as a queer Latina woman, um, that has not been an easy path. And I'm sure you all can relate to that as well, right? Um, I can. I want to see those plus ones in the chat if, if that's something you're experiencing or, or have experienced. Um, and so that difficulty led me to think, well, why is this so hard, right? And why? what can I do to support other women in their journey? Um, and so that is, that is what... Um, what my mission is, is to help as many women of color move into the leadership roles that they deserve um, and to do that with support and to do that uh, also looking at kind of the full picture, right? Um, I know in my journey, I sacrificed a lot. I sacrificed my health. I sacrificed, you know, sometimes my well-being uh, to move through and climb that ladder um, and didn't have people around me to say, hey, hey, you know, let's think about a different way to do that, or how can we reach your goals in a way that doesn't require that level of sacrifice? Um, and so I think it's really important to be surrounded by people who can, you know, teach us uh, those important lessons and also take care of us, you know, as a, as a community and as connection. Um, I see those plus ones popping up. So yes, exactly, exactly. All right, so we're going to start with 
the first move. Um, and if anyone wants to share a little bit of like what brought you here in the chat, that's also really helpful. Are you, you know, are you leading up to a promotion this year? Is 2024 the year you're like, I'm going to break through, I'm going to do this uh, exciting thing with my career? Definitely feel free to share that in the chat. Um, so move number one really starts with owning your story. And many of you probably have interviewed and have practiced your your pitch or your, you know, kind of, uh, you know, tell me about yourself, uh, uh, elevator pitch, but owning your story is a little bit different, right? And I always encourage my clients to think about it like a movie trailer rather than a book report. A book report tells you all the research and all the context and there's footnotes and there's all this in-depth information. Your story should be able to be articulated briefly concisely. So it's almost like you're watching the movie trailer that's giving you that preview, that's enticing you to go to the movie theater and watch the movie or stream it. Um, but you want to engage your audience to say, hey, this is something you should learn more about. My value, what I bring to the table is so important. You can't miss it. Ask me more about it, right? And oftentimes we get stuck in sort of the focus on the tasks that we've done or the responsibilities we've had rather than the impact of what we've done. What is the result of what you did, right? What was the impact to the business, to the community, to the relationships, to the people you manage, the teams, right? What is the impact you had as an individual in that change and that positive change or in making more money or making more, you know, clients or sales? Um, that should be the focus of your story. And I'm going to move through these and we can always come back to them in the Q&A, okay? And if you see me looking down, I'm just taking a little bit of a time check. Move number two is being the solution. So a lot of times, and some of you here might, you know, be in this situation where you might be, you know, looking for your next opportunity um, and you're applying to jobs currently maybe. Uh, really understanding the job market is part of the the work you should be doing, right? You should know what are they looking what are they looking out for, right? Who what are the types of skills or the types of tools that I need? And you need to match your experience and all of the skills that you have to what exists in the job market. Um, and to do that, you have to understand the market. And in the resource guide that I provided, there are some, some questions there to guide you in your research of understanding the market. But essentially, you're trying to talk to people, right? Talk to, to hiring managers, talk to decision makers in your industry to say, okay, when you hire for this type of role, what are you looking for? Right. If you're hiring a leader at your company, what are the things that are must haves on that list? Right. And that feedback is what helps you align your experience and your skill set to those roles that you're trying you're trying to lock in. The other is inventorying your strengths. For many of us, it's difficult to identify what our superpowers are. So not just I'm really good at this, but what is it that you bring that is kind of your secret sauce? Right. The things that you bring to problem solving, to you know, sales or marketing or whatever your, your area is um, that are your absolute strengths. That is really important to know and to always be able to articulate and talk about, you know, kind of be at the ready to say, hey, these are the things I'm really excellent at and consistently succeed in. And then here are the things that I'm very, very good at, right? That's an addition to that skill set. And the last piece is being the solution, right? So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that in conversations, you should already be anticipating what are the problems that I can solve for this company or for this department or this client, right? So rather than, and I know this is difficult when we're going through maybe a job search or a promotion, we often think about what it is that we need, right? Like I want the promotion. I want to make more money. I want to be in this role. And that is wonderful. Those things are important. Your needs are important. And the way we need to communicate our abilities and our expertise to reach into those leadership positions is by positioning yourself as the solution to the problems that organization is having. That is really, really crucial. 
Um, so ask yourself that question, right? How am I the solution to the problems that exist here, right? And how are your superpowers or strengths allowing you to succeed in problem solving? All right, move number three is around decoding rejection. So maybe get those plus ones out again. Who, who loves rejection here? I'd be surprised if we even get one, right? Um, <laughs> no, someone says, no, not rejection. Um, yeah, rejection is very, very difficult. It's not something we embrace, right? But it is part of the journey, right? So especially for women of color, the number of times you're going to hear no, or that's not for you, or you're not ready yet, or wait your turn, or it's not your time, right? All of those classic things that we hear when we're trying to move in our careers and take on more responsibility and take on a greater voice um, in decision making, rejection is part of that journey. However, we need to examine our relationship with rejection, right? You have to understand what your sort of knee jerk reaction is when you get rejected. For some of us, rejection means we've run away right? Rejected. They don't want me. I'm going to go hide in a hole and not come out for a really long time. For some of us, rejection means maybe being a little bit defensive, right? We don't want to accept that we're not good enough or that that's not something that we can, you know, lead into or, or a role that we're deserving of. So we might get defensive. And sometimes rejection just really kind of stops you right? It sort of just stops you in your tracks and you stay in the same place because you're like, well, now I just don't know what to do. So I'm not going to do anything, right? You don't run away, but you also don't get, you know, you don't activate or do anything different. You sort of just, okay, maybe this is just where I should stay, right? You kind of freeze. Um, and there might be variations of that as well. But understanding kind of your reaction to rejection is important so that you can help counter some of those reactions to make it a much more helpful point in your journey. What I mean by that is if you're getting the answer, no, you're not ready for that promotion into that leadership position, it's not time to run away. It's time to be inquisitive. It's time to ask questions, right? So instead of just accepting the no, saying, well, you know, this is still something that's a part of my goals. I'd love to know from your perspective, what can I do to reach that position? You know, be ready for that position. What would be your advice, right? Um, so asking questions, digging in, looking for feedback so that you can make sure you're doing all of the things that are expected for you to move into those leadership roles. The second piece of that is deciphering the feedback. So let's be real, not all feedback is one that we need to incorporate. Right. So sometimes we have managers or peers or uh, people in our network who might not want the best for us or they don't even see the vision that you have for yourself for a leadership role. And so we have to decipher that feedback a little bit. Right. Not all of it is going to be a one to one. OK, this person told me this. That's exactly what I'm going to do. We have to collect all of that feedback and then we need to sort of analyze it and translate it. Right. OK, what do I see here where hmm, maybe that has been a pattern of feedback or maybe, you know what, that relationship has some other layers or elements there. I know there's some competition. Maybe this person might not have the best interests, their best interests, right? So really trying to figure out what pieces of that feedback are things that you really need to, to action on. And then the last piece is re-strategizing. So taking that feedback, taking that moment of rejection and, you know, kind of catalyzing your strategy and saying, what do I need to change here? What can I do differently? Who else do I need to get involved? What other feedback do I need? Sometimes when you ask that first layer of feedback, you're like, wait, now I need to know more and I need to dig in here and figure out what that's about. Right. And re and so you re-strategize and think about, OK, what are the other next steps that can help me get to my goal? All right, move four, finding more than one way to succeed. 
So how many of you, maybe when you started your careers, you thought it was going to be this linear journey, right? You see the images of climbing the ladder, right? Looks very step one, step two, step three. Um, and by now, we've probably figured out that's not always the case, right? And especially for us as women of color, that's definitely not the case. And so one of the things that I work with um, with my clients on is figuring out a multi-pronged approach or strategy for their career goals. And what that looks like, if you're kind of saying like, well, what, what does that look like? An example of that is I might have a client who wants to move into a leadership position, has that role identified. They might be working on a promotion internally at their company. That's one part of their strategy. The second part might be that they're actually applying to roles outside of their company, right? For things that are, you know, desirable, right? Leadership roles, maybe high, higher paying roles for them. So that's their second part of their strategy. And the third might be looking at some unexpected places for that opportunity. What I mean by that is maybe it's not in the industry they're currently in. Maybe they are looking for a way to transfer some of the skills they have in their sort of specialty or the industry that they're in and apply it in other places, right? So that might mean that right now you're in the tech space, for example, but you might see, hey, there's some there's some roles that I'm seeing in, you know, in healthcare or in um, the nonprofit space, right? The social sector that might be might might be a good fit, right? And so that's how you build a strategy. There's different ways to reach the destination that you want to get to, and when you can activate all of those different pieces, there's actually a wonderful kind of momentum that you can build in your career because you're starting to you're starting to really plan strategically all of your different moves right so okay if i know that this promotion takes this long then i can be working on this thing and maybe that accelerates the pace right if timing is something you want to work on or if you're thinking you know longer term then maybe some of your strategies are more long-term and you're like, well, that gives me time to, you know, take a course or upskill or do something that you've been waiting to do, maybe a certification. And you realize, hey, okay, I have a little bit of time to do that in this strategy, right? In this pathway, then I can work on these things maybe a little bit simultaneously. It's also part of your safety net, right? So, we are often, as women of color, not in positions to just lose our jobs from one day to the next. We're not in positions, you know, we're supporting our families, our communities, you know, each other. Um, and so this is also a way to kind of build a safety net around yourself um, so that in case something unexpected does happen, you have those different avenues. For some of you, this might even be a side hustle, right? A side business that you have established to do maybe some consulting or some freelance um, in your area of specialty. That's all part of your like multi-pronged approach to make sure that you're always, you're always moving in the direction of your career goal for a leadership role, but you're also building skill and experience and knowledge as you're moving through those different path loops. All right, please. I'm checking on the chat. I don't see any questions left in there, but um, yeah, or you can drop them in the Q&A um, also. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to take a little bit of time to talk about move number five, because I think that it's one that um, a lot of a lot of people that I meet um, struggle with. So I call this getting noticed. I want to be clear that getting noticed um, the reason I emphasize that and use that phrase is because in our career journeys, a lot of the advice uh, that people give us casually or or even maybe not so casually um, is to, you know, network, right? Network, go out and network, network, network. And I think networking is very, very important. I think it's actually quite fun if you do it in the way that feels comfortable to you. For me, it's a lot of one-on-ones or small group settings. Um, that's where I... I love to connect with people. I feel like I get the most value. Um, so networking is very important. So I don't want to discourage you from doing that. However, 
the part that um, is really game changing for our careers is when we can start to employ tools to help us get noticed, okay? Getting noticed means that people are aware of who you are, your reputation, your skill set, your superpowers, and that they know that you're sort of, you know, consistently showing up and proving that, you know, your, your reputation precedes you, right? You're showing results, you're showing impact, you're showing, you know, all of the different projects and, and things that you're working on. So getting noticed has really three kind of main components. And I call this kind of launching your career campaign, right? I really want you to think about it as if, you know, you were running for office, right? Where you really need to to, to garner support from lots of different people and you need them to understand who you are in a really fundamental way and then have them act and support you, right, on your behalf. That is a very um, challenging thing for us to, to mobilize, right? We're mobilizing people to support us in our career journey. So the first thing you want to really figure out is you want to figure out who those stakeholders are. In some cases, that's, you know, your decision makers, your managers, your um, maybe, you know, other senior leaders in the organization, etc. Sometimes if you're not thinking about it at a certain company, right, that might be the hiring managers if you're applying to jobs, um, or it might be an audience, right? Like, the audience here today, right? It might be people that I want to speak to and that you want to connect with because that's your area of expertise, right? So you want to make sure you figure out, okay, who's that audience? Who am I talking to? Who are the ones that I want to get noticed by, All right? And once you figure that out, you can go back to your story and your superpowers and you can start to put together right, the communication or the talking points, whatever you want to call it, so that you can then say, okay, these are the things I want them to know about me. I want to get noticed by them because of these things that I'm very good at or the, the type of uh, value that I bring. And then the second piece is you really need to kind of rally your supporters. So what I mean by that is the decision makers can also be influenced by other people. Right. And so those will be your supporters. Maybe it's your mentors or if you have a sponsor um, or, or coaches or even your peers. Right. So don't discount that your peers also have influence. If enough of the peers are saying this person is excellent, this person is a great leader, this person can do the job, I know they can be successful. That also is influencing, you know, in small but impactful ways, those decisions. What sometimes happens with rallying our supporters, especially for us as women of color, is we get hesitant. We're not sure when to ask for help or, you know, we think of it as favors. Um, and so this can sometimes be a big challenge is how to get over that, that roadblock. Um, and part of uh, what I help my clients understand is that, you know, we... If, if you truly have been building a community of, of strong connections, right, then the idea is that in a moment, an important moment or a crucial moment in your career, those are the people you can call upon. And those are the people that are going to show up for you. And it would be no different for you to do the same for them when it's their moment, right, when it's their milestone, when it's their game changer. Right. And so I think it's really important to know that if you're investing in professional relationships and personal relationships and those people care about your career, then it should it should be an easy ask. Right. It should be, hey, this is the time, you know, all of those months of work I've been putting in. This is when I really need you all to help me. Right. This is how you can help and being very specific about what that help looks like. Are you asking them to send a note to your you know, manager to say, hey, that project went really well. Um, are you asking for a recommendation on LinkedIn so that, you know, everyone can see the great work that you're doing, um, et cetera. So we have to be really clear about what kind of um, support we're looking for from folks. 
And the last piece is the persistence. Um, so again, this, this ties back into the decoding rejection piece, but sometimes in the process of trying to get noticed, we can start maybe to feel some of that rejection, right? Or we anticipate rejection will come. And so we, we kind of hold back, right? And so we want to be persistent. Don't give up, right? Don't give up until you really get to the point of that process where there's no more avenues to move forward. But you really want to continue to resound, right? And to continue to try and get noticed with your messaging, your story, your accomplishments, your brand, et cetera, your superpowers. Um, so don't pull back when you feel like, oh, that didn't go so well, right? Keep trying and ask yourself those questions. Who's my audience? Who are the decision makers? How can I talk about my value, my brand, my story, right? In a way that compels them to understand the value that I bring. All right, I'm seeing some questions pop up. So, okay. Seeing a couple of questions. Let me just um, kind of put this to a close and then maybe we can move into the Q&A. Awesome. So I just wanted to share kind of this so we don't miss it, which is just staying connected. Um, you have the full uh, Career Game Changer Moves Guide. That's what's in the resources uh, button at the bottom of the Zoom. Um, I also have a private LinkedIn community where you can ask me for career advice. Um, and then also you can ask me about one-on-one -on -one coaching or speaking. I do speaking engagements, uh, workshops, and events as well. So um, just stay connected. You can reach me on LinkedIn. Um, and then I'm sure maybe we'll, we'll follow up with some more information about how to get in touch. Um, but yeah, let's move on to q and I'm, I'm interested to see what's popping up after I shared these. Yeah, thank you, Audrey. And again, um, I will send over the recording of this presentation as well as the Game Changing Career Moves Guide um, in a follow-up email to all of our registrants. So look out for that a little bit later today or even tomorrow. But let's hop into the Q&A. Um, as I read through these, feel free to ask more questions in the chat. Um, but first one I'm going to ask, so as a woman of color, have you experienced receiving feedback on a low level of confidence? I feel like this especially is critiqued in people of color, especially when a majority of colleagues, clients, ETC, um, are not people of color. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so um, let me just move this around. Sorry. Okay, so I can see the chat. Um, yes, so the answer is you will receive feedback um, that doesn't feel helpful sometimes, right? And uh, having a, a low level of confidence to me is, uh, or a specific you know, level of confidence, um, to me is not helpful, constructive feedback. And so that's one thing to look out for, especially as women of color, is that when you hear something like that, you can respond and ask questions, right? Again, get get inquisitive, be curious. Um, so one of the things you can ask is, well, can you give me, you know, an example of maybe when that shows up, uh, and and that you've observed, right? Um, and so a highly skilled manager will be able to take that question and actually have a a response or be able to get back to you with a response. Oh, you know, I was thinking about when you delivered that presentation, you know, you, you felt really hesitant, you know, some of the slides weren't developed, you know, there's going to be very tangible examples of ways to improve. And if you agree with that, that's really great constructive feedback. Oh, okay, I should spend more time on that presentation, or maybe I need to polish, you know, what's your advice? Like, can we work together when I'm doing those presentations, right? It should be conversational, and there should be some constructive aspect to it. If you ask a manager, can you tell me more about, you know, my low level of confidence and there really isn't, there's a non-answer or there's no way uh, to point to observ observable behavior, that to me is a flag, right? It means that you actually, one, aren't paying close enough attention to me to make this feedback constructive or it's coming from a place of bias, right? Um, and again, that could be conscious or unconscious, right? But the reality is that it's not helpful to you, 
right? And if your manager seeks to support you and to, you know, grow your talents and see you, you know, bloom in your value, then you need to be able to kind of ask questions or get clarity enough so that you know, okay, here's how this will go differently next time, right? And so that is a, a balance, right, that we have to play between, is this feedback going to help me in my career or is someone just seeing me as incapable because I'm a woman or because I'm brown or black or, you know, et cetera. Um, and that's the additional emotional labor that we all do is deciphering that feedback all the time. Um, next question from Pooja. Um, thank you for mentioning that we can find more than one way to succeed. I am currently in tech and always keep considering moving to the nonprofit space in the next five years. Do you have any resources on how to grow as a leader in the nonprofit space? Wow, that's a great question. Um, Lots of lots of ideas. I can share um, some resources, Pooja. If you want to share your email, I'm happy to get in touch with you, um, or I can share mine at the end of this as well. Um, resources. So there are, I would say, top of mind come. There are some philanthropic uh, or social impact, um, you know, blogs and websites. Um, I think it's important if you're making that transition and haven't been in the nonprofit space before, just getting familiar with kind of the the vocabulary, um, sort of some of the frameworks and concepts that nonprofits really lean into, which are, I would say, fundamentally very similar to the tech space, but in the vocabulary and in the lingo, if you will, are different. And so I would say just, you know, helping yourself to, to make that translation is really important. Um, and so that will help you if you're, you know, interviewing or talking to folks that you're using the language they understand to appreciate your value, uh, because you might be sort of talking over your, your impact or your results, right? You might be saying like, oh, you know, I made, uh, I'm just going to make all of this up here for the sake of an example, but you might say like, oh, I, I uh, was able to, you know, build a pipeline of, you know, $50 million with X number of, you know, clients and accounts, et cetera. Um, and that's like, someone might hear that and say, oh, that's wonderful. I could see all the transferable skills of someone who's been in tech sales to my nonprofit fundraising department, but some might not. And they might need you to spell it out and say, okay, you know, building a pipeline of sales was very similar to how I would build a pipeline or a funnel uh, for your, you know, individual donors or, you know, et cetera, corporate uh, partners. So just making sure that you're speaking to the right audience, right? And that right group of decision makers in a way that they understand you with clarity. Great. Right. Um, and I see a question in the general chat around where we can find that guide. It is in the resources button at the bottom of your screen. So if you hover over that panel um, next to, it should say apps, and then there's a resources button there, you can download the guide that Audrey mentioned. Um, okay, next question. So women of color, particularly black women are often seen as angry and aggressive. Any suggestions on how we can move beyond the stereotype and still get notice in the workplace if we are trying to get promoted? It's challenging when you are in rooms at work and share feedback, but your feedback is often discounted or over overlooked. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, first off, I'll say this. I am not a, a Black woman, um, so I can't speak to that experience. Um, but what I do understand from my work with clients um, and, and, you know, my own experience um, in this world is that um, there's kind of two philosophical questions uh, that you want to ask yourself in this, right? Which is, um, are you, who are you surrounding yourself with, right? What environments are you in? Is your work environment a place that already feels um, uninviting, toxic to you, et cetera, right? And I think it's important to kind of peel all the way back to that um, because if it isn't, then you know, as a coach, right, there isn't anything I can coach you towards that is going to make that place safe for you, 
right? Um, and so, and everyone has their own boundaries and everyone has their own limit limits to what they'll accept and not in a workspace, right? Um, but I always ask my clients that, right? Like, what is that environment like for you? Like, what have you experienced? Because if, if that gives you the space of saying, do I even want to be there? Um, first of all, if it is a space that, you know, for the most part feels welcoming to you and it's more the individual in the interactions you have with certain individuals or your manager, for example, um, that you're being labeled aggressive or angry, um, then I think you want to start to maybe explore that, right? Is there a possibility of this person being open to a conversation around that, right? Are you receiving that feedback directly right in a performance review or is it being said to you or is this more of your intuition as to what you're experiencing I think is also important um, to assess right if someone is saying these things explicitly to you right that escalates significantly um, because we know those are are direct stereotypes and we want to address those quickly um, and and not have people you know saying that to you so I think there's several layers to this, right? Um, but I will say this, which is it's not your job to correct someone's stereotype of you, right? Um, your, you should be able to come to your work environment and not have that be, you know, an assumption upon you. Um, so that's first and foremost. Does it happen? Yes, of course. Um, but I would say to you, you know, like, don't feel don't make yourself small, right? Don't make yourself feel less than because someone has these expectations of you. Um, I'm sure that, you know, all of the qualities you have make you an excellent leader. And so you should go to places and work with people who appreciate that and don't have that stereotype. Thank you. Um, question from Jasmine. How would you approach advancing into a leadership role in an environment with limited diversity at the top, particularly as a woman of color, where promotions for people of color are uncommon? Yes. So this is um, part of this will go back to the getting noticed. Right. So it's difficult um, to get noticed when you're sort of not on people's radar. And that is what happens, especially with uh, organizations where you don't have, you know, any diverse representation at the top. Um, and so if this is a place that you want to invest in and you feel it's worthwhile to kind of push forward, then I would suggest figuring out sort of, again, who's who's your target audience of that leadership group? Who's going to help make the decisions around you moving into a leadership position at that organization? And then I would figure out, you know, what are the things that you can do to help you get noticed by those individuals? Are there particular projects that have impacted their department? And you can reach out with just a note saying, hi, you know, I'm Audrey, not sure if you were aware, but I was, you know, one of the, the key, you know, team members leading that project. I just wanted to let you know how exciting it was. I, and I wanted to recap some of the the highlights and some of the ways that I was able to push that project forward, right? Um, <laughs> hands hands in the air, virtual hands in the air. If anyone's like, "Oh my God, I would never write that to someone," um, but you should, you should. That's why, yeah. Priscilla's like, "I am, I'm not." Um, you should, right? Those are the kinds of things that you can do to just say, "Hey, I'm here." You're not expecting anything from them. You're not asking for anything, but you're lending. You're reaching out and you're saying hey, I did this incredible thing. It helped your team. And I'm not sure if my manager or their manager is even going to ever tell you about it because they probably won't. So I'm going to do that work, right? I'm going to get noticed by you. Um, and then maybe the next time, you know, uh, it's, it's maybe less so about, you know, you, but maybe it's more so of like, hey, I heard your team is working on this thing. I found a resource that might be helpful. I just wanted to pass it along right? Again, getting noticed, right? Helpful thought leader. You're really putting yourself in that position of saying like, here I am, I have value. I'm, you know, I know, and I can think in the ways that are helpful to you, right? I deserve to kind of move up or move into a, a role where that would be part of my core responsibility. Um, and just to kind of continue that, because I know the, the, 
the crux of that question was around and not having people of color in the leadership roles, I think is, you know, you have to, again, be vigilant about are these people here to support me? What are they doing that I'm seeing in recognition of my work, right? I think that's something we can't lose sight of as well is, you know, is this an environment that, you know, if you're if you're giving your investment of your talent, are you receiving back, right? And what are the ways that you're receiving that back? Awesome. More and more questions popping up in the chat. So this is great. Um, next question. Any recommendations on how to get promoted at work when you have a boss who is less experienced than you are? Um, this is uh, an interesting one. Um, there's a lot there to unpack, I would say. I think, you know, some of the, the things to think through are the dynamics of your current relationship. Like, is there an awareness that you are the more experienced person? Does it somehow, like, is there a nice kind of synergy there? Sometimes it might be that they rely on your expertise, but they, they have experience that maybe you don't have. And so it sort of evens out in some ways. Um, I think that's important to sort of figure out what that, that dynamic is for you. Um, also, how is that manager supporting you at the moment, right? So regardless of who has the most experience, they have access and power because they're a manager. So how are they supporting you and elevating your experience or showcasing your you know, results or impact of what you've worked on? That I think helps to start gauge the strategy which is if this person is helpful to you and wants the best for you and is willing to do it, if they are less experienced, they may not know how to help you. And so you may need to, to sort of usher a little bit of that progress by saying, um, you know, next time I work on something like this, I'd really love for you to go on the, you know, company main Slack channel um, and write a blurb about my accomplishment and, and my role in it right? Or the next time you're talking to your manager, yes, managing up precisely, um, is, you know, I want you to be able to, you know, talk to your manager about XYZ thing. Um, so someone might need help doing that. But if you're hitting a roadblock with this individual, and even if you're not, it's important that you're also talking directly to other decision makers and stakeholders at the company um, so that they're aware of the work that you're doing, that they're aware of your experience and expertise. Um, so that might be like a multi-pronged approach, right? Work through it with your manager. Maybe it's managing up like Priscilla mentioned, but also um, make sure that you're getting in front of others just in case that manager isn't looking out for you or just doesn't know how to do that effectively. Love it. I love this next question because it's all, it's almost around like allyship. So I'm a woman, but not a woman of color. As a senior leader, I am always trying to learn and acknowledge and remove barriers. What do you feel is the number one item that we as leaders can do to open doors and move careers for women of color forward? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, so I think it's really, really showing up in action um, is most important. I think there's a lot of advice that we're given and we don't need more advice. We need people to literally, you know, like bring out the toolbox and help us. Like you need to, to really step into to action. Um, and so part of what I would recommend is, um, is really reaching out. That's, that's first, right? Like a lot of women of color, my clients, they'll struggle with even reaching out to a senior leader or somebody. And so it's like, do the work for them, right? If that's a barrier for them, you reach out. Who are you seeing doing incredible work yet you've never had a one-on-one -on -one with, right? Reach out to them, say, hey, I want 15 minutes of your time. I just want to know more about you. I want to know how to help you here at this company. What do you need, right? And asking them. Um, but making that first move sometimes is is the bridge that can change things, right? Now they have a direct contact and connection uh, with you. Um, the other I think is challenging your peers, right? So if you're at a, a level of leadership that you have influence and you have power, then using that and saying, hey, 
I'm seeing something here, right? I'm not seeing that we're even talking to women of color or considering them uh, for these leadership roles. What's going on here, right? And really challenging your peers because not many other people will be able to do that at your company. Um, and so opening up that conversation amongst one another to figure things out um, and to and to make sure that there's action on, on part of leadership as well. Um, and I think the other thing too is just really being accepting of the criticism and the feedback about why there isn't more women of color um, at your company. I think that for a lot of leaders, hearing that feedback sometimes um, is, is, you know, it's, it's decoding rejection, right? You're feeling aggressive, defensive, you know, it sort of puts the walls up. Um, but knowing that if you're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one chat with a woman of color at your company and she's telling you or they're telling you, you know, X, Y, Z thing happened to me, or this manager doesn't treat me well, or I've always been passed up for a promotion, you now carry the emotional burden of figuring out what to do with that feedback as a leader, right? You need to take that and you need to figure out, okay, how do we solve for this? Um, because asking for time and asking for feedback, especially from women of color or any other marginalized group, and then not acting on it is what frustrates us, right? It, it's what, you know, partly burns us to our core is because now you know, and you haven't done anything. There's no action behind the knowledge. Awesome. Um, next question is from Danielle. So as a woman of color, we receive feedback that our tone is too direct or abrasive when communicating without filler words or higher pitched voices. What is the best way to climb the corporate ladder when you are exhausted for portraying a certain persona that is more palatable for others? So I would say, you know, try other places. Honestly, I know this might not be, you know, kind of the, the advice you're looking for, but it doesn't sound like that is a place you want to be in, right? Um, and so I think that there are, I always describe it to people as there are pockets. There are, are pockets and places and teams where you are in your whole capable, talented self can be valued, right? Um, sometimes I think we we get stuck in the mentality of I have to I have to cling on to this, right? I have to I have to cling on to this because this is all I have or this is the only place that I'll succeed. And that is not true. That is not true. Will it be a tough struggle and a challenge? Yes, maybe. But the reality is that is not the only place. Okay. So don't feel stuck that you have to contort yourself into something that you're not just to be seen by the people that you're working with, right? I might, my, you know, my frank advice would be like, find somewhere else, find somewhere else that isn't nitpicking you about using filler words, um, right? Like I use filler words. That does not mean my value, you know, my content is less valuable. It just means that I'm trying to speak to you as, as, a, as humans, right? I'm trying to make this much more improvisational and less scripted, right? I'm not here to just read off a script, I'm trying to have a conversation with people. And I mean, sometimes filler words are in there. Um, so I would say just really, you know, seek your own value and seek the people who see that value. And there are some responses in the chat. I think a lot of people love this, this question and love that advice in terms of just like leaving where you are not valued. Um, so appreciate that. More questions popping up. <laughs> um, so how do you create opportunities for yourself to practice advanced skills that are required for your next position you want to obtain? However, in your current role, those skills aren't required or are, you, or are in your work goals, strategic growth concepts. So I guess it's more so is like, how do you continue to do that skill development for yourself, even when you're not necessarily working on those skills in your current role? Yes. Yeah. Great question. Um, and that does happen to a lot of us, right? Because we might be stuck in a certain, you know, stuck for now in a certain role. <clears throat> I would encourage you to find that experience wherever you can. Um, one of the ways that I've seen it uh, be successful for some of my clients is actually, you know, moving into like a board role. Um, I know in my, you know, 
couple chapters ago in my career when I was looking for those additional skill sets was when I first joined a nonprofit board um, and made sure that I was learning a lot of the things that I didn't have access yet to do. A lot of the you know finance and operations, um, even just leadership development, right? Being with some peers where I was kind of, you know, inspired by them and, and making sure that um, I was learning from them and observing uh, their type of leadership. So there's lots of ways to do that. I think board membership, freelance, consulting, contract gigs, um, teaming up with a friend and saying, hey, let's, do you want to try this out, right? Maybe you start your own little business or maybe you do an offering on LinkedIn of some sort or, you know, start a social media channel, right? There's many, many different ways to gain that experience that doesn't have to be from your, you know, nine to five core job. Great. Um, and I know we have about nine minutes left, so we might have time for two or three more questions, just putting it out there. Um, okay. so next question, any advice for non-native English speakers to speak with confidence in a room full of native English speakers who are also not people of color? Yeah, absolutely. So again, you know, I encourage you to think about, you know, what are we what are we solving for here, right? Are we solving for because you've really seen that maybe there is a gap in communication and you really want to fill that gap for yourself so that you're communicating your ideas, you know, co cohesively, comprehensively, succinctly, et cetera. Um, I think that's wonderful. I think, you know, we all want to get better at our, our speaking skills and, and communication is so key, especially at leadership levels. Um, However, right, the other side of that is, are we trying to, you know, sort of wedge ourselves into something that is expected from us, right? Having another um, language or having diverse language skills is a plus. It's amazing, right? <laughs> it's always a good thing. Um, so if you are, uh, you know, being given feedback about, oh, we don't understand, or you have an accent, right, things that are uh, uh, harmful to you, right? That is not a place we want to be in. I'm sorry to keep harping on sort of this thing, but I think there is, I always try to make the distinction as a coach of how are we helping you succeed in your life and your ambition and passion versus how are we trying to fix ourselves for society's mold for us, right? Um, and we know that we want to be kept at a certain place and a certain level, right? We don't, people don't want to see us grow and succeed um, and be decision makers. So that's always why I ask those questions, um, because it's so important for us to really differentiate the like fixing us versus the I want more for myself. I want, I want more for my community, myself, and, and what I want to leave as a legacy in this world. Those two things are very different. Um, so I would start there. Um, and then uh, if it is, you know, if you're like, I want to improve my skills, um, then there are amazing speaking coaches who work on public speaking. Um, there are communication coaches, there's presentation coaches, <laughs> there's all sorts of coaches who can help you um, build that skill area. Um, but if it's like, I just want to, you know, wedge myself into a mold, um, then I would, I would just be, you know, honest and say, hey, look, I know that, you know, sometimes there's commentary about not understanding me. I give you, you know, advanced slide decks. I give you these things. Those are the helpful tools. Here we go. Like, either you want my talent or you don't, right? Like, that's that's kind of sometimes the, the way you have to really address things. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I think this will be our last question. Um, and knowing that you work closely with the ERGs at General Assembly, I did want to ask this one. So how might ERG leadership work be documented and considered in performance reviews and talent review cycles, as there are many transferable skills that's beneficial to career growth, both as individual doing the work and the leader of someone engaged in ERG leadership work? Yes, wonderful question. Um, and and very aligned. Um, so there's a couple of things. One, I think um, I would encourage you to, and if you have the capacity to bring this up with your manager and also with your HR people team and say, hey, we have a whole host of ERG leaders here who are doing exceptional work. Is there a way we can actually embed this into our performance review cycle um, as a question? <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Um, I think that's really important is to have that written and acknowledged in the performance review. Um, the other thing, if that's you know not quite there yet, um, is actually having um, your, if you have an ERG program manager or someone in the DEI team, is actually supporting ERG leaders to identify what are some of those core competencies that um, ERG leaders are using, and then give you the language to incorporate that into a performance review or even your one-on-one -on -one check ins with your manager to say, hey, I'm you know doing all of these things at the ERG. I really feel like this aligns with these you know two or three competencies, um, and I'm really building those skills, right? And reminding them that hey, this this work is real work, um, and actually is probably giving you expansive skills beyond the the role that you might have is super important. Um, the other is if you have an ERG executive sponsor um, or even just you know any amazing you know, leaders in your ERG leadership team um, is asking them to provide a testimonial or a, a small you know, blurb or feedback saying, this is what I, these are the skills that I saw, you know, this person use this quarter or this year in their ERG work, you know, uh, their leadership, their, you know, tenacity, their decision-making, you know, whatever it is, strategic skills, et cetera, like have others vouch for you who are witnessing that work. Um, because again, your, you know, direct manager may not see the ERG work that you're doing directly. So have those folks you're interacting with vouch for you in that skill set that you're building. Okay, I think we're going to wrap it up there. There are still quite a few questions left in the chat, so I will actually export this and send this over to you, Audrey, if you want to get back awesome. to the maybe um, answer their question offline. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us and for presenting to the audience here. I think just looking at the chat and the Q&A, it seems like this was a super valuable discussion to everyone. Um, and thank you to our audience for joining us. As I mentioned, I will send over the recording and then the resource guide um, as a follow-up either later today or um, tomorrow. But thank you again for joining us. Audrey, if you have some final words, I'll give you the floor. Oh, thank you. Well, just thank you, Demobi and to Chesi again for being able to address this amazing group. Thank you for all the interaction in the chat. Um, and I will say, please reach out. I, I, a question never goes unanswered with me. So please reach out, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and continue, continue going forward. If leadership is what you want and you see yourself in those roles, go for it. We need more of us there so that we can build leadership with our vision in mind, right? What it really looks like to support uh, one another. Um, and we don't have many examples of that uh, right now. So we need as many of us to really lead the way and to continue opening up those doors. So anything I can do to help, I'm here. Um, and even if it's just to have a good vent session, hey, that's sometimes what you need. So great to see everyone and interact with everyone and happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Have a good one. Bye.